Hello and welcome, you're watching Tech24, I'm Julia Seeger. In this edition, the quantum computing era is coming and it's coming fast. Based on quantum physics, it's set to transform the landscape of AI and cryptography in a big way. And while the concept is already difficult to explain, imagine having to build a quantum computer. In this edition, we tell you how close we are from using one on a daily basis. And in Test24, we'll test a solar backpack developed by a startup in Ivory Coast. It's already helped hundreds of kids living in homes without power to study after dark. But first, this week we take you to the Fredericksburg Palace Church in Copenhagen. Religious leaders there have started using a mobile app to help them bring all aspects of church management together. From donations to promoting religious events and coordinating day-to-day -day activities, technology is making the lives of churchgoers much easier. Catherine Viet has this story. A typical Sunday service with a twist. Fredericksburg Palace Church in Copenhagen is one of hundreds of churches using modern technology to connect with its congregation. It's a big step that you can be on both websites, newsletters and social media and communicate there. And you can also have the app on your phone, so you're always up to date with what's going on in the church. The app, called Church Desk, can be used to arrange and promote events, then share that information via emails, text messages or digital newsletters. There's also a handy contribution section that helps with collections and raising funds. Church Desk was founded by Christian Stephenson in 2012. The son of a priest, the idea came to him when he saw the challenges his mother faced trying to organize and promote church events. He says the app has really taken off, and not only among younger members of the congregation. If you talk to our churches, you, you know, they will have everybody expecting the church to be online. You know, you have lots of old people that will ask, why is the website not updated? Or how can I find it through my, my, my smartphone? So I think it's, uh, I don't think it's, it's, it's about youth. Um, obviously it's about the future, but the future is already here. Church Desk says over a thousand churches in more than 23 countries are using its software. The app is based on a subscription model, but the tech startup also has competition. Church App and Smart Church are also bringing church management onto smartphones. And turning our attention now to the quantum computing revolution. The concept may seem complicated, but we're going to try to introduce you to this strange and exciting world. First, with an explanation by Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. He made a big impression during a press conference a couple of months ago when he answered a reporter on the spot explaining exactly what it means. Normal computers work, either there's power going through a wire or not. It's one or a zero. They're binary systems. Uh, what quantum states allow for is much more complex information to be encoded into a single bit. Regular computer bit is either a one or a zero, on or off. A quantum state can be much more complex than that because, as we know, uh, things can be both particle and wave at the same time, and the uncertainty around quantum uh, states uh, allows us to encode more information into a much uh, smaller computer. So uh, that's what's exciting about quantum computing, and that's what we're and it's time to welcome our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Do you have a better way of explaining quantum computers than the Canadian Prime Minister? Well, that was pretty impressive. But of course, we'll explain the concept in more detail. Essentially, quantum computation takes place when qubits, they interact with each other. Now, what are qubits? Qubits uh, stand for quantum bits. Now, in classical computing, if you know, a bit is a, is a unit of information that has a state either one or zero. So it can be either in the state one, which is denoted by one or zero. It's like a light switch. It can be either off or, or on. on. But in qubits, they are in both the states simultaneously. So at the same time, they are both have one and zero state. This is because of the principle of superposition, which is, uh, which is very unique to the quantum world. Now, uh, 
let's go back to our high, some high school physics or college physics uh, and to, just to explain this concept of superposition you know in 1935 austrian physicist erwin schrodinger came out with this thought experiment uh, in which a cat is placed in a steel box and in that box there's a poison capsule and a radioactive decaying atom that will trigger a mechanism that will burst this capsule and the cat eventually will die but till the till the box is closed we don't know if the if the capsule has been triggered right. so the cat is dead and alive at the same time only when we open the box so only, only when we measure the 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 entity will we know if it exists in one state or the other so not opening the box it's 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 in both states so that is a rough idea of a rough introduction to quantum physics superposition and that and the and the advantage of having these two states at the same time is that uh, qubits can store and eventually process more information exponentially more than what classical computers do so computers will go faster essentially uh, and how close are we to using these computers in our homes well you cannot i mean i don't see them i don't see people using them uh, for day to day tasks like i don't know surfing the internet or playing games but because they are so powerful uh, than what than the normal computers they'll be used to do complex tasks like for example uh, to predict weather to i don't know to uh, study molecular structures even in artificial learning machine so in the medical field as well in medical field it has tremendous applications and there are two companies uh, which have already started to develop these computers on a commercial level uh, one is a canadian company called d wave uh, already google nasa it's using uh, d wave for uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning and even uh, it's been used to predict the uh, the traffic patterns of cabs in beijing so it will be easier to hail cabs so it has multiple applications and ibm has also uh, introduced its own quantum computer called ibm q which or other whose services are now available on the cloud of course you have to pay for them and dev is also hoping to bring these services on the cloud and eventually both these companies would want to uh, make computer or not i mean more than just these two companies would want to uh, make these computers quantum computers readily available but the problem is that uh, the interaction of you need the interaction of qubits so it's a very complex process to make this happen and that is the big challenge that the companies have to overcome Thank you, Dan. We're going to move on now to Test 24. According to the UN, 700 million Africans still don't have access to electricity. And in those remote villages, kids can't study after dark. So Everest Akumyan, the founder of a tech company in Ivory Coast, has found a solution, a solar backpack called Solar Pack. The Tech 24 team met with him. Let's take a listen. In Africa, we have lots of sun from 6 a.m. or even 5.30 a.m. So we had to create something using that that wouldn't cost much to parents or students, something that could help them to study after dark. So it's a backpack. This is the first model. We have another one that's a bit bigger. The bank has a 3-watt solar panel and there's also an incorporated battery. It's 1,000 milliamps. Inside the bag, we have an LED lamp with a USB port. With the energy gathered and stored throughout the day, the child can come home and plug a lamp into the bag. That way, they can still have light after dark, meaning they can study. If the child exposes the bag to sunlight or daylight, they can then have up to three hours of autonomy. And Everest has already given out 500 of these solar backpacks for free in several cities across Ivory Coast. And other countries are now interested in this technology, such as Cameroon, Congo, Haiti, Senegal and Guinea. Dan, let's talk about other initiatives from Africa that uh, have attracted your attention. Uh, one of them is called Code Bus Africa, which involves the Finland government. Uh, they are essentially commemorating the 100th anniversary. So they have partnered with, uh, for example, in Nigeria, they have partnered with a company called Ventures Platform, uh, through which they have uh, taught around 160 students the computer coding technique. And this particular initiative is going to travel all over Africa. And it is a 100-day initiative. So... Uh, students are going to, especially girls, are going to be taught uh, these coding techniques. And there's another initiative, this time in Burkina Faso. 
That's right, a company, a tech startup rather in Burkina Faso called iCivil Africa has, uh, has developed a, a platform for essentially digitally registering newborn babies. So they have created a birth certificate system uh, using technology that involves mobile phone application, a bracelet, and an encoded text system. So what happens is once a baby is born and you have to register it, uh, you put a bracelet around it and then uh, uh, using the application you scan that bracelet and once the bracelet gets scanned that baby gets a unique ID number that is sent to the uh, to the government centers and there the birth certificate is ready. So all you have to do is go to that center and you just present that bracelet and you get uh, the birth certificate. And why is it so important to register babies there? Because globally there are millions of babies that don't get registered as you know uh, if there are problems with uh, birth certificates or even when you're, you know... So-called ghost child, yeah, children, exactly. right? And so there could be some uh, problems in the future. Thank you so much, Dan and Jay Kadokar. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech24. We hope you enjoyed it, and do stay with us here on France 24.